The makers of Johnson's Wax present the 23rd chapter in this history of harmonious hilarity with Rico Martelli's orchestra, Lynn Martin, Lavere and Winston, the Johnson Merrymen, and Marion and Jim as those domestic deliverers of devastating diversion, Fibber McGee and Molly. Rico Marcelli's fine band gets some vocal assistance from that dandy octet, the Johnson Merrymen, which makes it fine and dandy. Wrap it up, Rico. <laughs> Martelli's music sets your feet tapping. Please remember to look down at your floors and make a mental note. Johnson's Glow Coat will give a marvelous polish to your floors and linoleum, keep the surface shining for weeks at a time, and save you all the work of rubbing or buffing. It's the finest no-rub floor polish that can possibly be made. Johnson's Glow Coat. <laughs> times we've joined the Mary McGee's, we'll just skidoo down to 79 Wistful Vista and see how they're getting along. <laughs> skidoo. This modern slang, what'll they think of next? <laughs> well, we find Molly paging Fibber from the dining room. Fibber! Oh, Fibber! Maggie! Yes, my love. <laughs> yes, my love. You, uh, you calling me, Molly? Well, why don't you answer when you're spoken to, McGee? I didn't hear you, Molly. That is, I didn't hear you the first two times you called. <laughs> well, come in here and give me a hand putting up the curtains now. Well. Oh, who might that be at the door now? <laughs> if that ain't just like a woman. Can't answer a doorbell or open a letter without holding a guessing contest first. Well, ain't you going to see who it is, Molly? Oh, dear, me in an apron. How's me hair, Mickey? Huh? How's me hair, my goodness? How's me hair look? Oh, 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 your hair. <laughs> Why, it looks okay, Molly. Just you won't be bald-headed for a long time. <laughs> Don't you worry none about that, Molly. Oh, dear, I suppose I'll have to answer it. Take your feet off of the chair, McGee, and try and look respectable whilst I go through who it is. Okay, Molly. <laughs> Gosh, I had a pig and his name was Herman, grunted in French and Swiss and German. Rodeo, do, rodeo. <laughs> Where'd I put them matches? Oh, yeah. Herman chewed off his tail with a dim, was always behind but twirly for him. Rodeo, the dead rat, the dead. Gotta get this pipe fixed. Oh, well. Come right in this way, Mr. Bartleford. Fibber, this is Mr. Bartleford. 
Me husband, Mr. Bartleford. How are you, Mrs. McGee? I'm tired, brother. <laughs> How's yourself? Splendid, thank you. Are you are working you? your way through college? On account of the are, I might as well tell you, I won't have time to read no magazines until I catch up on the Sunday papers. You see? Huh? Mr. Bartleford is from the Chamber of Commerce. Sit down and make yourself comfortable, Mr. Bartleford. Thank you. You betcha. Sit down and build yourself a lap, Sporty. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do for you? Uh, well, Mr. McGee, I'm a committee of one representing the Chamber of Commerce to welcome you and Mrs. McGee to our little community. Whoa. I'm authorized to extend the hand of fellowship and give you the keys to the city. What's the matter? They lock it up every night? <laughs> oh, no, no. That, that was just a metaphorical expression. Oh. Now, we want you to feel at home in our shops and public buildings, our churches and our schools. Oh. And, well, personally, I might say that as proprietor of the Bortleford Bon Ton Bootery, I'll be very glad to see that you're taken care of in a matter of footwear. Oh. Now, we're having a special sale this week on shoe trees, socks, and soles. Just a mite there, Borty. You a shoe man, you think? Why, yes, yes. The Bortlesford Bonton Bootery, you know, on Main Street right next to them. Well, tap me with a tombstone, brother, if that there ain't funny. <laughs> well, what's so funny about that, McGee? Yes, I, I fail to see the, uh, uh, the... Oh, you don't get the idea, eh, brother? <laughs> well, sir, it just struck me all to a heap that we should ought to be welcomed to this town by a brother shoeman. Brother shoeman? Oh, now, McGee, are you... Am I going to tell Bordy here how I used to be the biggest shoeman in Santa Bologna? You betcha I am. Have a cigar, Borty? Oh, thanks, I have one. Oh, hey, you got two? <laughs> Come to think of it, I'll smoke my pipe. <laughs> yes, sir, Bordy, I'll never forget the time Oscar Doster, the Denver Doster, comes up to me and says, Cut away, he says. I was known as Cut away in them days. Cut away, McGee, the card cutting killer of Colorado. Oh, McGee. Yes, sir. I was running a poker game at the time and always wore a cutaway coat. Well, sir, Oscar Doster says to me, Cut away, he says. How about me and you going into partnership on a business proposition? Name her. I snapped, drawing my six-shooter like lightning and knocking the left ear off in a cow hand that was taking aces out of his sleeve. <laughs> What's the proposition, I said. Well, sir, says Oscar, I got me 42 acres of flip trees down into Santa Bologna, and I want you to go into partnership with me. Pardon me, did you say flip trees? Yep, flip trees. F-L-W-H-C-H. <laughs> <laughs> That's the shoe tree. <laughs> now, Bordy here, speaking of shoe trees into his store, reminded me of it. The natives all call them shoe trees. The scientific name for them, though, is Flutius both foot here. <laughs> What's say, Molly? I play the Epse Adderley, McGee. Huh? <laughs> That's the scientific term for we'd better be hanging the curtain. Okay, but Bordy here wants to hear about the shoe trees. Don't you, Bordy? Uh, no, I'm afraid Well, I... sir, to make a long story short, <laughs> or a short tail curlier, me and Oscar Doster went down to Santa Bologna and started cultivating them shoe trees. The foot or the shoe tree had a sort of a tough pod on it, kind of a cross between a melon and a coconut, which when dried out, tanned, and eyelets put into them, make shoes that'll outwear leather by five times. Only thing there was, they was inclined to be either too loose or too tight, and all the natives had foot trouble. You, uh, you say the natives picked their shoes right off of the trees, Mr. McGee? Yep. You see, our problem was to cultivate these trees so that we could get any size shoes off them. Any size and any color. So we cross-grafted the foot trees with the redwood trees for big shoes and peanut plants for little sizes. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't long before we could go out into the foot orchard and pick off a pair of shoes any size, from two and a half triple A to 14 spot ruffle D. <laughs> the best time to pick them was just at dawn. I see. You shot him at sunrise. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> shot him at sunrise. <laughs> I didn't get it at first. <laughs> uh, Mr. McGee, I should think there would have been a great demand for riding boots down in that country. They was. That's why we had a special tree grafted from horse chestnut trees and grew the finest riding boots ever seen. We got carpet slippers from hickory grass. Hickory being real rugged. <laughs> You get it, Molly? Rugged and carpet slippers. Okay, it's funny, McGee. <laughs> okay. Okay, but simple. <laughs> well, sir, Bordy and me and Oscar Doster cleaned up a cool million on them shoe trees. Till Oscar, who was always experimenting around, tried to grow ladies' evening pumps by crossing foot trees with the night blooming serious and we lost all we had. <laughs> then a forest fire cleaned us out all over a couple of trees, but hey, say, you ain't going, are you, Bordy? Well, I'm afraid I must be going, Mr. McGee. Oh, it's been a very interesting afternoon, I'm sure. A good day, Mr. McGee. 
Uh, good day to you, Mr. Bortford. When I need some shoes, I'll be in. Splendid. I, I hope to see you both. Uh, oh, by the way, Mr. McGee, huh? uh, what happened to the two uh, shoe trees you managed to save? Oh, them. <laughs> oh, shucks, I give them the Oscar Doctor. Yep. He took them down to Central America to a friend's plantation. Plantation? Yep, a rubber plantation. He's trying to raise shoes with rubber heels. <laughs> well, drop in again, Bordy. Go on. pair of Perfecto Grando piano persuaders, Lavere and Winston, put their hands and hearts into body and soul. hundreds of thousands of housekeepers. With this marvelous no-rub floor polish, you can keep your floors sparkling and clean without any work of rubbing or buffing. You merely spread a little glow coat lightly over your linoleum or wood floor using a soft cloth or the special glow coat applier. You don't have to bear down or rub it in. In 20 minutes, the floor will be gleaming like new, ready to walk on. Glow coat shines as it dries without help from you. Scientists in the famous Johnson's Wax Laboratories spent many years in developing this perfect, no-rub floor polish. You're entitled to the best, so be sure to insist on Johnson's Glow Coat in the attractive yellow can with the red lettering G-L-O hyphen C-O-A-T. Now little Lynn Martin, assisted by the Johnson Merrymen, makes what we might call a true session. I'm in the mood for love. We're just in the mood to hear about it. Lynn Martin. I'm in the mood for love Simply because you're near me Funny, but when you're near me I'm in the mood for love Heaven is in your eyes Bright as the stars we're under I'm in the mood for love Why try to think of weather This little dream might say We put our hearts together Now we are one I'm not afraid 
take you back along the hot air waves to number 79, Wistful Vista, where Molly's suggestion about putting up the curtains is bearing fruit. Did we say fruit? Yes, indeed. Take a look at Fibber holding a bunch of drapes. Dad, Brad, and Molly, how do you know which ones goes where and what? Well, lay them down, McGee. You want to get them all wrinkled up? Look now, this one is for this window, and that one is for that window, and this Hey, one... hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Getting me all mixed up so I can't fix Well, what are you doing now? Marking them with a pencil so they'll know which is which. Stop it, McGee, for heaven's huh? sake. For two weeks I sew and wash and iron the curtains and, and then you want to mark them up with a pencil. Well, shucks, you mark screens for the right window, don't you? Why not mark curtains for the... I I'll get it, Molly. You stay right where you are, McGee. You put the curtains on the rod. I'll go answer the phone. Okay. If it's that there considerable watching boy, tell him to come right over so he can Hello, 79 Whistle Vista, Mrs. McGee speaking. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, well, now that's real nice of you. Thank you. Yes, we will. Goodbye. Who was it, Molly? It was the meat market inviting us in to see the store. Oh, shut <laughs> I saw it Saturday. It cost me 82 cents. Well, what of it? It's real nice of him to call and ask for our trade. That shoe man now with his... McGee, what are you doing? That is what you think I'm doing. I'm putting the curtains onto the rod. Well, take them off again and put them on the right rod. The narrow curtains go on the short rod. The wide curtains go on the long oh, rod. Oh, shucks, what in tongue is the difference? And well, don't the... drag them on the floor, eagerness. Okay, okay, but I can't keep holding them up over my head like this all the time. <laughs> you won't let me fold them or lay them down no place. Here, the... now, here. Here's one all ready to hang up. Bring the step ladder. Oh, I'll just stand on the chair, Molly. I can reach. And scratch the chairs all up. You'll do nothing of the kind, McGee. Bring the ladder. Well, Dad, read it. Why? Bring the ladder, McGee. <laughs> what say I get the ladder, Molly? <laughs> well, it's about time you you used your head. <laughs> use my head? <laughs> you don't use your head on the step ladder, Molly. <laughs> you use your feet. <laughs> Don't you get it, Molly? I said... Ah, that ain't funny with you. Okay. Bring the ladder here. Looks very solid to me, Molly. Well, you're no primo canora. Climb up and I'll hold it, please. Okay, okay. You'll find my insurance policy into the left-hand drawer of the table there, Molly. Be quiet, McGee. Can you reach? Yep. Hand her up. Here it is. Hey, 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 hold that there ladder, will you, Molly? These here curtains make a dad rather poor parish. Now hold it now. <laughs> Why, it seems real good to have curtains up once more. It never seems like home till the rugs are down and the pictures hung and the curtains up. Home. <laughs> Just this here's a CCC camp. <laughs> I've been working till my hands... A is... CCC camp is right. Yeah. CCC for cussing. Complaining and... And curtains. <laughs> Dad, Brad, it leaves the receiver off the hook. You and have the phone company come out here to see what's wrong? It's probably the drugstore to listen to our business. Hello, 79 Wistful Vista, Mrs. Yeah. McGee speaking. <laughs> Baker's Bikery? <laughs> oh, Biker's Bakery. <laughs> oh, yes. No, not today. Oh, sure, we'll be in. Oh, thank you. Goodbye. That was the bakery, McGee. Oh, it was. My, they must want our trade. They're sending over some baked goods, complimentary. Now, what do you say to that? I say, looky, 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 here comes cookie. <laughs> Hold that ladder, Molly. I got it all right, McGee. I got it. I can make me a better ladder than this here one with a handful of matches and a piece of chewing gum. <laughs> now hand me the curtain, Molly. 
I'll try and get it. You stay up there and stand still now, McGee, whilst I answer ah. the phone. Hey, let me get down first, Money. Don't let go. Oh, hey, hold on. Nah, you'll be all ah. right now, McGee. Just stand steady. Hello, 79 oh. Whistle Vista, Mrs. McGee speaking. Oh. Who? Oh, the dry goods store. Special today. Oh. How about the yard? Uh, hey, Molly. This your letter's shaking like it. Hey, Molly. I'm falling. I got back there. You're always clowning the minute me back is turned. <laughs> Hello? Oh, Hello, dry goods store. <laughs> Assisted by the Glee Code Glow Club. I mean, the Glow Code Glee Club. <laughs> Otherwise known as the Johnson Merry Men. And I might add that you'll join the Johnson Glee Club yourself once you try Glow Code. If you're tired of having floors that always look a little dull and dingy, and if you're weary of constantly having to scrub your linoleum, then you'll be simply delighted when you try Johnson's Glow Coat. This easy-to-use, no-rub floor polish works like magic. Dries in 20 minutes to a beautiful, bright polish while you're thinking about something else. You never have to do any rubbing or polishing when you use Johnson's Glow Coat. And once it's on, your linoleum and floors stay clean and shining for weeks at a time. Dirt and dust can't cling to the bright, protective polish. By the way, your dealer is offering you a very special price. A can of Johnson's Glow Coat and a long-handled applier at a saving of one-third the regular price. Just try some glow coat on your floor tomorrow and see what a difference it makes.
your little Blue Network engagement book now and write this down. F-M-W-Z-N-M-E-S-T. Got it? That means Fibber and Molly, Wistful Vista, next Monday evening, same time. F-M-W-Z-N-M-E-S-T. Okay? P.S. Yes, oh, are you in again? <laughs> I just wanted to tell the folks while you were doing all them initials. N-T-F-T-J-G-C. Meaning what? Not to forget their Johnson local. <laughs> <laughs> you get it, Harpo? I said S C R A M. S C. What's that mean? That means come back and sit down, nigger. Oh. <laughs> oh well. R S V P. R S V P says River, meaning receiving set very prompt at seven next Monday evening. Until then, remember the best housekeepers the country over use Johnson's wax and Johnson's glow coat to save themselves work and keep their homes shining and clean, just as the most particular car owners keep their cars sparkling like new with Johnson's auto wax and sleep. This is Harlow Wilcox, I-S-O-M, in spite of McGee. Good night. <laughs> Fibber McGee and Molly come to you from our Chicago studios. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>